Good evening, and I would like to reopen the regular meeting of the Bronxville Board of Trustees for November 13th, 2023, and ask all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Start with a quick mayor's report. Um, at long last, some of you walkers who are watching, the Duck Pond Bridge is, is down there. It's a prefab bridge, and they tell me it's going to be operational by week's end. So for all the folks who like to do that one mile loop, it's gonna be back hopefully by, um, by Friday. Um, we have a food drive going on uh, thanks to the Junior League of Bronxville and uh, they're looking for all the sides that go along with the turkey dinner and uh, items can be brought up until Wednesday the 15th and they can be brought to the front of Village Hall. Um, a couple congratulations. Um, First to our uh, county legislator, James Nolan. He will continue in a second term, and uh, we hope to continue the, um, the great working relationship we had with Mr. Nolan. Also, our first female detective, Cheryl Jarose, is on the job, and uh, again, uh, Congratulations to her for being the first in the um, Bronxville Police Department. Uh, on all the good news, the um, uh, girls tennis team in Bronxville became the state champions and um, our police department escorted them with sirens and much fanfare back home from uh, Long Island when they got to the village border. And the girls, uh, boys and girls track team, many of them have qualified for the upcoming state championship. Um, and finally, uh, this past week, obviously the 11th was Veterans Day and, um, and a big thank you to all our veterans. Um, there's a wonderful anonymous quote that says we don't know them all, but we owe them all. So a thank you to, to every veteran out there. And since our next meeting will be after Thanksgiving, just a happy, healthy family Thanksgiving to everybody listening. Thank you. Jim? Thank you, Mayor. And then trustees after Jim, maybe if anybody has um, different areas that they want to update us on. Okay, just uh, a couple items. First, we always talk about the leaf blowers, but <clears throat> just a reminder that the use of the gas-powered leaf blowers are permitted through December 15th, through, uh, so during this leaf collection period. Um, they'll no longer be permitted from uh, December uh, 15th through March 15th so in the spring. The day is the you can go, that's a Friday, so you can use them that Friday, but not the 16th. Exactly, yep, we wanted to stop that before the holidays. Uh, and on that, uh, on that note, uh, DPW's principal focus, Department of Public Works right now is of course doing the leaf collection. Last week was a short week yeah. uh, due to the two holidays for uh, the, the street and highway division with the exception of we did have sanitation in to do the, the refuse collection on, um, on election day, but otherwise it was a short week, so they're a little bit behind on leaves, however. Um, they will be out in your neighborhood, and uh, the crews are going to be working on this Saturday as well. So, and just a reminder, as we put in the newsletter, uh, uh, please try to refrain from putting your leaves uh, out in the street, um, and especially near catch basins. Uh, so just wanted to mention that. While we're talking about stormwater, uh, <clears throat> what we were just discussing in our work session is that 
I am uh, working with our uh, consulting engineer with PCI to schedule another Zoom session uh, for uh, the neighborhood of uh, Hamilton and Sussex and Sherman. And uh, I will also reach out and include the residents of Elm Rock, Lee, uh, as well as Masterton uh, on that next Zoom session. And uh, we will schedule that for early next week, uh, hopefully on Monday afternoon, and then I'll let everyone know so we can, I, um, <clears throat> since I do get emails and calls on that regularly, and everyone in those affected neighborhoods are anxious to see what the, uh, the design of the stormwater improvements are going to be. But uh, as many of the residents know in that area, part of the process has been to complete those soil borings, which were done. And uh, there were tests, uh, borings done at several locations along uh, Holmesdale and Hamilton, again, to see the subsurface conditions to confirm any rock uh, and the type of soil. Uh, so the more information that we have in advance for the contractor, obviously, it would be better. Right now, I'm also working on obtaining the water maps, uh, hard copies, digital copies of the actual maps, even though uh, We've done markouts for those utilities. We actually want the um, uh, the maps for where the water lines are located. That too will help us uh, because again, what we're what we're talking about is adding stormwater conveyance lines, large pipes uh, in the ground uh, along uh, sections of Sherman, Sussex, Hamilton. Uh, across Pond Field, down Holmesdale, uh, and also doing the same on uh, Elm Rock uh, down to Masterton with the purposes of, in the case of Elm Rock, diverting that water that's coming down from, uh, uh, from Iona. Uh, everything on the west side comes down, uh, down 22, and Elm Rock's a wide road, and you can see it on a, during a heavy rain event. It's, uh, it's rushing down Elm Rock. And the current design of our existing system is when it gets to Elm Rock in the corner of uh, Oriel, it all makes a sharp turn all the way down Lee, where it then discharges to Hamilton and Sussex and to that low point. So uh, the, uh, the approach that the engineers are taking in their design is increasing the size of the uh, conveyance, adding a new conveyance pipe to supplement what we have in the Hamilton-Sussex area to capture that stormwater that's also coming down 22 into those neighborhoods, uh, but at the same time also reduce what's coming into those neighborhoods from what's coming down uh, Elm Rock and Lee. So uh, for anyone listening, uh, if you're in those uh, neighborhoods, we will send out a, um, we actually have a large group already of over 34 residents in one of the, uh, in one particular area, but we will um, set a Zoom date and we'll give you the details on that so you can uh, listen in and hear what the, uh, what the plans are. So more to follow on that. Yeah, Mr. Palmer, just to clarify on that, the current plans uh, and thoughts for drainage down Elm Rock and Masterton are down Elm Rock and then to the south on Masterton. So uh, residents who are north of uh, Elm Rock on Masterton, uh, at, at present, uh, nothing is gonna be happening in front of their, those <clears throat> folks' houses, just, just so we don't uh, right. make more people uh, <laughs> wondering what's going on than is, than is necessary to be down Elm Rock and then down to the left of Masterton. South on right, Masterton. Being diverted to Pondfield, correct. Right. Yes, yeah. Uh, and again, in the discussions with the engineer, it's, uh, it's the, the focus has been on, right, uh, uh, preliminary conceptual designs. Now we're getting to the, the formal design stage now that he's reviewing the, uh, the boring information and has the maps from uh, the other uh, utilities. Uh, and, uh, right, and determining on, I think we're all in agreement that the, the first step is to work on getting the infrastructure in uh, where it's undersized uh, on Hamilton and Sherman and Sussex. So more to, uh, more to be followed on that, and hopefully uh, within the next week we'll have, a, uh, we'll have a timetable that starts to take shape. But I also know that our engineers have walked with the contractors that did uh, uh, bid and were awarded our emergency contract uh, back in 2022. 
The only other uh, item that I also wanted to mention is uh, just to update the board, as uh, many of you might have seen, the uh, following the, the uh, board's approval, the uh, construction of the uh, sidewalk and the RFB installation is uh, underway on 22. And uh, the sidewalk is actually entirely in, uh, along with the RFB pole on the uh, east side. And the uh, contractor was uh, preparing the, the cutout for the footing on the, uh, for the RFB on the west side today. Uh, and, and as a, just a, as a reminder to the board, I think there might have been uh, some confusion as to uh, the hedges that were removed at to Dusenberry. Uh, and as was part of the project uh, last year before we halted it, halted the project, I had had numerous conversations uh, with the homeowner of Dusenberry, continued to have numerous conversations, and it was always the village's intention to uh, replace uh, those hedges that needed to that needed to be removed. That while the the root of the hedge, if you will, was on private property, the hedges were leaning um, out well out into the right of way, and unfortunately, due to their condition, frankly, were uh, roped and being tied up over the years. Uh, but uh, so as part of this project, I had met with the homeowner last year before we had paused the project that they were going to be removed and that the village had an estimate and was prepared to replace those. Uh, so again, we've been working with the homeowner and it was the intention then, our intention now to uh, reimburse the homeowner for the replacement of those, uh, which frankly will also significantly help the uh, sight line at that location as you head out of Dusenberry because uh, for the last several years, unfortunately, certain types of aprovidae uh, don't grow out uh, as opposed to up, and this particular aprovidae was also growing out. So it should help with the sight line as well. So um, just wanted to clarify that, that um, that is underway, and the resident did pick out a landscaping company and will be providing me with those estimates, and he will. Uh, uh, he will be reimbursed when he provides uh, an invoice. So I just wanted to clarify that piece, and that's all I have. Thank you. Trustees, does anyone want to speak on anything, update us on anything? No? Uh, just very briefly, uh, this uh, Veterans Day, on, uh, at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, uh, uh, members of the Nature Preserve and the adjoining uh, streets, primarily Ridgecroft, Courseview, uh, Dusenberry, and, and others uh, got together for our Fall Nature Preserve Cleanup Day. And I think it was our best cleanup day ever. I think we had uh, over 20 adults and uh, perhaps even more importantly, over 20 kids uh, show up and uh, did a lot of removing of vines, overgrown bushes, planting of bulbs in the nature preserve and uh, it was a really uh, very nice event so I want to thank uh, everyone in that part of the uh, of the village for their uh, uh, community spirit and showing up uh, in in force so that was a, a very nice uh, day and I know I'm going to end up leaving some folks out because I only thought of doing this this morning uh, but in the context of Veterans Day uh, I, I, I know this because with our promotions of our police officers, we get to be reminded of some of their background. And if I've left an officer out, it's, it's on me, but I know that uh, police officer Ahmed Donso Farid and our newly promoted uh, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant William Carroll are both uh, military veterans. Uh, so uh, I think it's appropriate. I, I know all trustees would join me in thanking them Thank you, for their service. And uh, again, I didn't attempt to do this and for anything. Peter. And, and Peter, our <laughs> videographer extraordinaire. And uh, I don't know who from DPW or who else in, in Village Hall, but uh, I, I just happened to know of our two police officers and my apologies to anyone else I've, I've missed. I think we're very lucky to have all of our staff and again thank those members of our village family in particular for their service. 
Thank you, Bill, for remembering that. Thank you. In, in your comments, could you provide any update as to what's happening with Metro North and the work there, if there is any? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> sure. They um, they are working on they are working on the underpass, uh, largely during the hours of 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. weekdays. So it's, and honestly, it's this. Uh, this project is going to take uh, it's going to take many months. It's going to it's going to take several months, but it's it's long overdue. And uh, but as you know, they're uh, they're cleaning the steel, uh, removing the rust, painting the steel. That right now they've been priming it uh, to uh, hopefully uh, preserve its its life. Uh, replacing sections of the steel where necessary. They're also uh, cleaning the, the concrete uh, where there's been some of the spalling and uh, they'll be painting the concrete. Uh, so multiple steps, but unfortunately what I found out is this crew that's doing the work that's coming at nine is coming from uh, almost as far as Dover. And by the time they, right, by the time they get down here and then they have to be back up there by, uh, by, uh, two, by 2.30 because uh, it's another hour up. And, so it's um, it's going to be an for an extended period of time, but already with the work that I've seen, though, is positive. Okay, it's so, um, it looks cleaner, uh, but it's every moving along. many more months. Yeah, many more months. But what I should emphasize is I got to say, with doing a little brainstorming with Metro North uh, and the chief of police out there, we were able to simply uh, work with alternating uh, alternating traffic by cutting the concrete islands out, as you could see. And uh, it seems to have kept traffic moving. We just requested that they start after nine. But when I found out that, yes, these guys, uh, by the time they get down there, they work for a little bit, they've got to start to head back up. And, um, but it's in progress. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All righty, I think we have um, one public hearing on a proposed local law 6-2023. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Essentially, Jim, isn't this, I mean, just something we have to do now that we're helping to fix the uh, the sewers on Wood End Lane, correct? Exactly. So, right. Remember previously, uh, right, previously we, we put the line in, a homeowners are now getting connected to it. We had a new section in our code, but this, this language will now uh, exempt homeowners from having uh, to install the 500 gallon uh, concrete holding tank if they have a generator uh, functioning on the site. So it's just another one of those options that uh, if they have a functioning generator, then they don't need a backup holding tank in the event there's uh, a failure with the injection pump. So it's, again, we added this new section for sewers and it's just evolving a little bit. Okay, perfect. Trustees, anyone? Uh want to speak about the wood end lane i think we've gone through that and the neighbors know so this is just to to codify things anyone in the audience want to uh to speak to the public hearing do we have a person in a second to open up that hearing i'm you sorry. Yeah. You got all that. Yep. yeah yeah all right no it's not terribly exciting but it's it's a must do so do i have a motion to close the public hearing so moved and a second all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And trustees, do you want, is there a spot here, Jim, for us to vote on this if we want to? Yes, right on okay. let's start with new business for that, perfect. Yep. Thank so you. do I have a motion to adopt local law 6-2023? So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And then Jim Singham, our guests in the audience, I talked to um, Trustee Knapp, and we thought we would move the schedule around and have um, the library and the Green Committee go to the top of the new business list, okay? Sure, sure. All right, and Helen, do you want to um, introduce both of those? Okay, um, well, let's start with the, uh, the Climate Action Plan. Um, so we have a resolution to adopt the Climate Action Plan for Municipal Operations that Carol Upshur so uh, wonderfully presented last month. 
um, with with the, all the work you've done on that with Ellen Edwards and the Green Committee. You know, we so appreciate all the analysis and thought uh, that you put into that report. Um, I know there were several questions that the trustees had at last month's meeting. We kept the meeting um, open for public comments. I don't know if we uh, we had we did receive some one comment. Anyway. One comment. Um, is there any other discussion of the? No, I think uh, I think Carol answered the uh, the comments that we had received prior to your report. So that was that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, there was a comment um, at the end of the meeting in the public comments. Um, somebody was asking about the, the costs involved with some of the recommendations, and we just had made the <clears throat> clarification that this is a set of recommendations, um, right. and that any. Um, Mo any uh, plan or project that the village adopts will be carefully considered for for cost and uh, you know undergo a thorough cost benefit analysis. Um, but we really do appreciate and and want to keep in in the forefront this idea that um, you know our plan to reduce greenhouse gas and to do our part to um, you know move forward in the climate goals. And a number of them do also save money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good point, good point, good point. Oh, thank you for all you've done. And Ellen Edwards is here, who chairs the committee. And um, it also reminded me to mention what a huge take back day you had for the village. Um, just another, the amount of volunteers you get to come. And I saw those cars lined up at 8 o'clock in the morning to shred their documents, which sort of amazes me. My documents just aren't that good. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so I should have had that up front in my report. But a huge thank you for putting that together. Um, and, and the pumpkin uh, jack-o'-lantern drive for the root food that's right. recycling, that apparently brought up a bunch of pumpkins, right? So Spilled up the bins. Yeah. Spilled up the bins. <laughs> Increase the weight, so we're going to get the... So uh, thank you for all those initiatives. And um, Helen, do you want to make the motion on the um, Climate Action Plan? Okay, so I make a motion to adopt the Climate Action Plan for Municipal Operations um, to help the village make meaningful reductions in our use of fossil fuels and protect our community and the planet from harm associated to climate change. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We, we have a climate action plan for the first time ever. <laughs> uh, Mayor, just to, to clarify, uh, the climate action plan is available on the website, is it yes. not? Yes. Yeah, and, and I will just say very briefly, I, I just thought it was eye-opening. It's just outstanding and I yes. think anyone who has any interest in this or, or how the country or the world is going to actually sort of try to grapple on this I mean my takeaway is you know it's got to be grappled at largely community by community which knows its own you know needs and requirements and and problems and just I just thought it was eye-opening and thank you again and we're just glad you moved from Massachusetts to Bronxville. So thank you. That was our good fortune. Yeah, you, you aren't allowed to leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yes. All right, Helen. And then, do you want to move to the library? Okay. So um, we have two resolutions uh, regarding the um, Bronxville Public Library outdoor reading garden. Um, one to accept a, a SAM grant submittal and acceptance for the hardscape and landscape improvements. Um, that's a 125,000 SAM grant um, that the village is eligible for to offset some of the costs. Um, do we need to? Is that yes, is just that a motion. Senator uh, Mayor or uh, Representative Amy Pollan? That's Amy Pollan. Yeah. Amy Pollan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we just, uh, this is a nice mo motion just to accept the, um, yes. the state grant gotten to us by Assemblywoman Pollen. So I will move that. Second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I would just say that between um, Representative Amy Pollen and Senator Shelley Mayer, uh, we've been the recipient of many of these SAM grants, and it's quite generous. And 
we're very lucky to, to be getting them. Well said. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, and the other resolution um, is to um, award the um, contract for the design of the outdoor gar reading garden for the Bronxville Public Library. So I see Christina Kritikos is here. Um, she's been really spearheading with Margaret Major and other trustees and friends of the public library this entire project. I know when you first submitted the, um, uh, the contract for public bid, uh, several bids came back. Casal was the low bidder. Um, you and Jim and the friends and um, the library director went back to Casal to, to reduce the cost. And it seems that this contract that you have in front of you is um, you know, been vetted and, and has been thoroughly um, analyzed and, and is acceptable. Jim, have yes. any comment on yep. yeah. And yeah. The, uh, yeah, the architect uh, with Peter Giuseppe's office has recommended that we award it to the, the low bidder, Casal, and of course the village is, uh, has multiple projects that we've done with Casal Conrad, so it can certainly speak to his quality of work. Including okay. Malpe. Including Malpe. Malpe. Yep. Yep. Stonework is their specialty, and that's what yeah. this is going to involve. Uh, did you, uh, do you have any, any comment you want to make on this? Or? <clears throat> um, you want to? You, you should probably talk into the microphone just so folks on the air can hear. Uh, we received four bids on the project. They range from 794000 up to $1.7 million. So there was a spread there. Um, Casal was the lowest bidder, and as Jim had mentioned, they have done previous work in the village, so we felt very confident with them. Um, the one thing was electrical costs were consistently high across all the bids, so we went and reduced the scope. Um, and the revised amount was 646000 which we were much more comfortable with. And that's what Jim is going to propose that the board approves tonight. And do you also want to uh, mention you sent out a beautiful piece of literature yeah. about uh, needing community donation and what, what you'd like, what's the goal for funding from yes. us? So the overall project is 750000 and we have a $250,000 gap that we're trying to fill with the fundraising. We've had several large donations come in already, but we still um, are going out to the public now. And from now until the end of the year is really the big fundraising push. And um, we send an appeal to every resident in town, and we'd love donations from, from ev everyone and anyone. No amount is too small, and um, we just love the support of the library in the community. Um, sure. What's your overall goal goal for fundraising from the friends? Two hundred fifty thousand. Thank you. And I think it's important to know that the village board is definitely partners. What did we put in one? One fifty. One fifty. Which just to um, uh, reaffirm how much we think this uh, project is so so important yeah. to the village. Absolutely. And Jim and I worked through the numbers. We have projections through the end of the project commitments from every group and just fundraising commitments through the friends to cover the remainder. Um, we have the appeal letter and then the party in the spring, so we feel very confident in covering the entire project. Perfect. And maybe the only other thing, since Christine is here, that it's worth noting is that, um, and I think this was the first time you saw it too, was the, the notification that um, the uh, uh, SHPO, the uh, state agency for historic preservation, had uh, reviewed the project to ensure that it was uh, being in conformance, presumably with the library's historical status. And I'm, I'm thinking about this, and I was surprised that we saw that letter that they were reviewing it, and then we saw the approval of it because uh, the work is uh, the work is outside, and it's also going to be in keeping with the with the building. But I'm assuming that it was probably forwarded to them from the um, uh, dormitory authority who who oversees these uh, applications. You know, and that's what one of the requirements with SAM grants is it's right. thoroughly vetted from the dormitory authority and the. Uh, and the, the state legislature, and one of those things they look for, of course, is like your approval, acceptance, et cetera. So my guess is probably as part of that process, the dormitory authority must have looked up and saw that there was uh, a historical status for the library. I don't know if you had anything else. I don't know any of the details either. Greg is more familiar with it, but it was triggered, and he submitted the paperwork and everything. But has the been immediate approved. response that it's all in compliance was uh, perfect. 
Correct. You know, and yeah, so that was all good. Um, I just have a continued question on the funding. So the overall project in its entirety will be, you said, 750000 Correct. Um, 250000 by the Friends fundraising, so, 125 from the SAM grant, and then 150 from the village leaves us short 225000 We're We're looking at it separately. So um, I, I gave these numbers to Jim. I don't have copies for everyone. But we have 150 village contribution. The Friends gave an initial contribution in the beginning of 105000 So that was to kick off the project. They covered the design costs. OK, um, great. So we have a SAM grant from the state of 125000 and then the remainder is split. Um, we secured leadership gifts separately, um, and that will total 300,000. Mm -hmm. And then the remainder is 100,000 split between the fall appeal and the spring benefit. Gotcha. So in other words, and, and so as of right now with what the board is approving, uh, and the, the, we have broken this up into two phases. <clears throat> so following the review of Casal's lowest bid, the low bidder removing some of those uh, removing some of those items from his bid, uh, such as uh, benches, some electrical work. They got the price to what you're going to be approving here, and that's for phase one. And essentially, the library, with the commitments that they've received for the leadership gifts, in addition to the money in hand that the village has already deposited from the Friends of the Bronxville Library uh and the village's contribution to sam there's the money is currently available to complete phase one yes yeah, some of those leadership point. gifts have been collected already some haven't so i say the remaining 250 was when we had started the numbers um in october so we just continue to fundraise um through the end of the year we'll get a big push with the appeal letter and then we're going to go into the spring benefit in april to cover the phase two costs right so the village will end up or the village and or the, the in conjunction with the library will be on the hook if the friends well, and the appeals and I, don't. Right. Well, I think what we can do is at this point, again, it's uh, depending on uh, you're going to be approving the award this evening, but we've discussed having the uh, the contractor wait till the uh, presumably the worst of the winter, uh, winter weather and we'll get started. The phase two, which is, again, the, the landscaping of the benches, I think uh, at that point, in the spring, they'll be able to on right the on the other funding opportunities. Worst case is potentially maybe some we, of the landscaping is pared back until the other donations yes, come in. We That's feel all. very confident in how we we split the phases, how we, the current funding we have in hand. Um, we're starting the work in February, more so. So we're going to award the contract <clears> tonight, <throat> and then the contractor will start ordering materials. So he'll have everything ready by early winter, and then he'll mobilize his entire team on the project. So we'll have his team on the project. Uh, as short as possible, so it'll be six to eight weeks, rather than starting now and having a wait with some of the materials. So we've just staged it so it will be as efficient as possible um, for the library, and it also allows us to stagger the funding as well. Well, I echo the mayor, mayor <coughs> excuse me, the mayor's comments. The fundraising brochure that was just sent around was was great and very illustrative of the, of the project. It went to every household in, in Bronxville, yeah. and um, we just would love participation from everybody. Yeah. And I think also, since you know, flooding is rightly topic one. This project actually, uh, there's it helps. Um, it's beneficial to water retention. I mean, that was something that you all looked at, um, just being mindful of, of what's going on. AJ, the town, the um, uh, engineering consultant. We've incorporated a rain garden. Right. So drainage is one of our top priorities. We're going to improve drainage around the perimeter of the building, the window wells, small things, but it's it's a high priority for us as well. Perfect. That was really appreciated. Absolutely. All right. Would you like to okay. move this? So I move that um, uh, that the board of trustees hereby authorize the village administrator to execute a contract with Tony Casal, Incorporated, for the amount of. $646,000 to complete the phase one work for the public library um, outdoor patio project. All right, I need a sec. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for your support of the library. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. All right, and then Mr. Palmer, do you want to, we'll go back to the, um, the order as sure. written. Sure. Uh, so housekeeping, it's uh, yeah. this month we need to send, submit into the county our formal polling uh, site locations. So uh, I've identified those for you here <coughs> uh, with the caveat that 
so again, Village Hall, this is for the village elections to be held on Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Village uh, Hall will be the polling location for Districts 16 and 17. Uh, we have the firehouse down for Districts 18, 19, and 21. And then uh, Christ Church, once again, for District 20 and 22. And uh, as the was previously conveyed to us, the fire department is going to be undergoing renovations at a certain point on the, on the firehouse across the street. So uh, in the event that that uh, takes place uh, before the election, then we did secure, um, thanks to your efforts, utilizing the um, reformed church across the street once again. So those are the polling locations in the event that we needed uh, a backup for the firehouse for 18, 19, and 21, then we'll uh, notice that, but the backup would be the reformed church. Perfect, so we just, do I have a motion to accept the polling places? Oh, so moved. In a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, uh, next housekeeping item is uh, use of uh, our remaining ARPA monies for uh, closing out the project over here at the uh, Midland and Pondfield uh, intersection. Uh, you're authorizing uh, the use of $45,833.21 from our ARPA funding for that uh, capital project, is this the end of the? Uh, is this the end of the ARPA money? This will be. Uh, if there's one other project that we will be doing, uh, that'll be our right. That'll be coming up at the next board meeting. One of those uh, state-of-the-art uh, enclosed mobile pump that we're going to. Uh, oh. Yes. Water pump for uh, neighborhood mobility for neighborhood uh, flooding issues, but oh, yes, right. that'll that'll close it out. And this money is being applied to some of the extras that we did over here at the intersection, including the addition of a teardrop on the um, school corner to illuminate the uh, the crosswalks on that side. So, lots of improvements. Thank you, Lori, our treasurer, for managing the the ARPA funds and helping us. Uh, uh, put them where they were needed most. So thank you. All right. So I need a motion to uh, use the ARPA funds for this project. I'll move it. In a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Let's get more of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it don't last a long time. I don't think that yeah. Really. Just kept coming. Lori, could you make some more money? <laughs> Might be the end of our American Rescue Washington. Plan money. Well. Yeah. I just, I'd just like to compliment again everyone who was involved in the procurement and the design of the procurement. Because I've actually gotten a couple of comments from residents who sort of said, you know, I was kind of worried about how the new lights would look at you know, the Four Corners intersection. I think they've really been pleasantly surprised right. that it really looks like they've been there forever. So thanks to... Uh, to all those yeah, very in keeping with the village. Yeah, I yeah. think they turned out even better than we thought yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, I don't know whether you found them at Walmart, Jim, or where you found <laughs> yes. them. Certainly not, but I spent a lot of time looking <laughs> yes, at you paint did. colors to get that paint <laughs> color just <laughs> right. <laughs> we those, still have to paint that one pole that I hate. Yeah. On the way. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, there is. Uh, yes, there's one more that still needs to be painted. That's okay. Yep. Probably noted. Duly noted. Duly noted. Duly noted. <laughs> All righty. Mr. Palmer, what's that? Okay. Uh, a recommendation for some uh, SCAR proceedings, settlement of some SCAR proceedings from our assessor. Uh, there's nine of these. It's for the 2023 year uh, for some uh, different addresses. Total of the is this about, this looks like a, kind of a consistent level of uh, SCAR proceedings. Yes. Do you yes. know we used to have re before revaluation, there was upwards of 300, yeah. and now we get approximately 10 or 20. So the difference is unbelievable, actually. Yep. And there are villages that are still getting those hundreds for not they are. at 100 percent. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right, and uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so obviously, uh, Michael's or. Um, uh, Mark is doing a great job at keeping us current on these. So this will wrap up the 2023 year. Yeah. I'll, I'll move for adoption. And I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 
Yeah, and, and just for villagers who may be watching, uh, you know, the, the settlements here amount to a requirement for the village to refund only $5,670, roughly. I mean, right. it's, a, yeah. it's a rounding error in the context of the village budget, and I think it really speaks well of our uh, village assessor and uh, the processes we have. Well, I think, and Bill, to your point, when you think about the entire taxable value of property in the village is in excess of $3 billion. Yep. And this is 1.5. So you're, you're a, a basis, you're less than a basis point of, I mean, you're a tenth of a basis point. So that's pretty good. Yeah, they, yeah that's the best, compar better comparison. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Do I need to, I, you, you moved that and we voted, correct? Yeah, we did. So yeah. we're all set on that yeah, one. We did two of those. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so next is, uh, next is the um, uh, NAC unit for the uh, police department IT room. Uh, we need to, yeah, we need to put some HVAC improvements in there. So we did, um, Receive multiple quotes pursuant with our village's purchasing policy. So uh, we're just requesting that the board authorize uh, $3,950 for Neighbor Electric to do the electrical work and then utilize Innovative Air Solutions for $10,702. Uh, and uh, both of these monies will be funded through the use of unassigned fund balance transferred to the capital fund. And again, this is, we've had problems with maintaining an appropriate temperature in the uh, police department server room on the basement level, and we really need to keep that room cold, yeah. given the amount of heat that that equipment is generating. Uh, there's a lot of equipment in there. So um, anyway, well worth the money. All right, I will move that, and do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, and then uh, also, in keeping with the police department, we um, uh, were also requesting the use of uh, neighbor electric for $5,650 to help out as part of our climate action plan efforts and uh, convert the PD uh, lighting where necessary over to LED. You know, we were, one of the things that we've been trying to work on for the past several years is um, have another energy consultant come in and uh, evaluate where we do have some of the low hanging fruit. And so we, we put this on pause for quite some time, but, uh, we have some areas where the police department needs the LED lighting, and we got some quotes, so we just want to move forward with it. I think we still have the energy audit underway, though, uh, and Stevens uh, handling that. But our intention is to also finally paint the PD, which we were really trying to do before COVID. And then uh, with the PD in lockdown mode, uh, we had to postpone all that. So you're authorizing transfer of unassigned fund balance for the LED lighting, and um, and after we get that in, we'll paint the building on monies you previously approved. So I'm trying to spiff up the PD a little bit. But Jim, that just, that, that just says the second floor. Are there other parts of the PD that, that could go to LED or? Or does this finish it off? Do you know if that finishes it off, Stephen, for um, LED lighting over there at the PD? I think so. <clears throat> but could they do, I mean, is there any reason why we wouldn't just do all that's necessary versus just, you know, this just says second floor, so I was just curious. No, it's, it, because the payback on something like this is outrageously high. Yeah, and, yeah. So and if the guy's here just, and you know he's got yeah, a it's, contract, it's probably more cost efficient to do as much as possible. Jim, could yeah. you check? And yeah, I will. I, I think he did a walkthrough, and I think that was uh, I think that what was left. Good, but, yeah, we'll confirm. Good in a future meeting to get an update as to the status of our energy audit, kind of the, what the status is, timing, etc. Uh, we will, yeah. It's. Uh, I think they they did all their walkthrough. They're working on giving us a summary report. Yeah, good. Okay. Maybe, we could, maybe we could even take that up when the board meets again. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And Stephen Shallow, thank you for all you're doing with the um, the audits and the energy, and um, appreciate it. Uh, all right. So, do I have a motion to accept this bid from Neighbor Electric? And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. By the way, speaking of, of energy and climate, did, did we mention publicly the, the $5,000 grant that we got? 
questions? Oh, I don't think you did. I think that was after our, our last yeah. meeting, correct? For trees, isn't uh, it? Yes, I think we, uh, we, I think we, brought, that, we? we brought that up at the last okay. meeting, but yeah. yes, yep. And I think Stephen's already, uh, already yeah, it. and already <laughs> sent in our trees. Yeah, we did, actually, we did spend it already, but we, the newsletter. We did spend it already, but he also already submitted our uh, Tree City USA application. Because we just can't too. say it enough then. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's all. Um, no, it helps. Thank you for saying yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, Jim, we're near the end. Yes, to be done. Just make a note for myself. Okay, uh, next is the, yeah, last, just the bond sale for the, uh, for the police car. So these two items you had previously approved, this is the, um, a police car, the Dodge uh, Interceptor, is that what it's called? Durango, rather right, the Durango, right, yeah. Uh, and, a, and a coin sorter uh, for the um, uh, meter collection. So you had previously authorized the issuance of debt service. Uh, now we are starting to, over the course of the next few meetings, you're going to be considering some uh, bond resolutions as we work toward uh, what the deputy mayor started asking me about earlier, the next uh, bond issuance that we will um, that will we be taking on. So, in one of the future meetings, you'll be considering uh, the stormwater the stormwater funding. But for this one, uh, we will do uh, we will need a road call for our bond council. And um, again, we break this. It's one resolution, but it breaks out the two projects. Uh, which in this case are two equipment purchases and their, uh, and their useful life. Uh, and again, that's the police car you previously approved. It's the Dodge Durango, which replaces the, I think it was the Tahoe that was uh, beyond its last leg. Uh, and also our coin sorter, which I don't know how old the other coin sorter was, but well beyond its useful life is what we got out. It gets, a coin sorter still gets a lot of work. <laughs> so eleven thousand dollars seems like a lot of money for a coin sorter. It's, I have no idea what it does, but it, <laughs> this is a heavy. This is it a, must be a big. This is a heavy duty. Yes. Oh, but, okay. We were, believe it or not, to get <laughs> that was uh, that came from well overseas. Uh, that that coin sorter. So in the interim, we had to buy something less than a commercial grade. Uh, that was getting us through, but not nearly uh, as efficient as it needed to be. So, um, with that said, if there are no questions on the um, on the bond, do we have a motion and a second, and then I'll do the roll call? I have one question. It, it, it said that for the police car, the period of probable usefulness is three years. And uh, as a matter of practice, do we normally get more than three years use out of? New police yes. cars. Yes. Yes. This is. I think Bond Council works with a, uh, a yeah, schedule, I mean, but. But they go, yes, but they, we they, use them longer than that. they do go longer than that. Yeah. And uh, mind you, the police vehicles will, will get a lot of wear and tear. But I got to say, even the, it's not a police car, but even the Explorer that I use is uh, over 10 years old now. And that's still, um, that's still going. But the police get more wear and tear. But yes, uh, this is just the schedule they go with. All righty. So do I have a motion? In so, a second. Second. Okay, and then Jim, for bond purposes, we have to do a roll call, yes. correct? Yes, okay. Uh, Trustee Knapp? Aye. Trustee Barons? Aye. Trustee Fredericks? Aye. Deputy Mayor Underhill? Yes. And Mayor Marvin? Aye. Perfect. Alrighty. Is uh, that's all one I have. for each? Or no. no. That's it. Yep. And I think Helen gets to work the coin sorter. I want to. Don't you'd also. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought the trustees used to get together with those like paper tubes that you get from the bank and fill each roll. And yeah. Our pennies. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh. Where is, it, is it kept in your office? Where is the sorter kept? The coin sorter is right in front of Yeah, it's in a little room. Right where it belonged. <laughs> From the parking meters? $52,000? Yeah. Wow. 
That's a lot of coins. Going all the yeah. time. You know what, what's yeah. a, what's amazing is uh, <clears throat> is of course you know, and I should provide you an updated report on that. We uh, obviously for parking meter revenue alone, the village uh, for on street meters, we uh, collect a million a million dollars now. The, the use of Pango has and continues to grow significantly, but um, coin collection and uh, we do accept nickels and dimes and you'd be amazed. Yes, it's still, um, it's still significant and it's, there's actually fewer carters that are collecting coins, aren't they, Laurie? Yeah, <laughs> we, we have discussed many times whether we should just go to credit cards mm. because there are a lot of cards that are associated with the <clears throat> Yeah. But it is, but it is, but it is a convenience. But on that note, one thing that you did approve a couple of years ago, and we just haven't—it's—it's um, it's got pushed somewhat on the back burner. But we have met with some vendors. Is uh, doing a pilot program with the use of of meters that would accept uh, credit cards, so we could see what their use is. Um, but again, the Pango, uh, the Pango monies is absolutely continue to, to continue to grow. But for the for the shorter term meters on street, yes, coins continue to be the preference, but we are going to put a pilot project in place with the use of some of those credit card meters to see what the response is on those. And I, and I think those are even capable of using Apple Pay, I wanna, so I want to understand how that works, but I, um, we're getting there on that to try to get out of the coin business. Make it like so that um, coins are less cost benefit, like you get 10 minutes for a quarter instead of Such 15. <laughs> <laughs> every little bit, you know, we need every little bit of revenue. Yeah. Here. A service charge for the coins. <laughs> well, that, that would push people towards credit cards if they wanted to, Coming you know. into the holiday season. <laughs> yeah. 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 And while it's, and of course, it's important that you know that we've, uh, we have gone, uh, we have taken all the, uh, the meters out of all the, um, the lots. So residents are either using the, uh, the kiosks or the pango there. So it's, it's, um, but we will test the, um, the meters on street with. But I also thought of uh, before we, trustees, anyone else have? Um, yes, yeah. um, I was just gonna say I was in town today and I saw four or five illegal U-turns on Pondfield yeah. and people, one person actually backed into the spot, the spot after doing an illegal U-turn. So just a reminder that illegal U-turns um, across double yellow are illegal and please refrain from doing them, especially in the, on Pondfield where it's backs up traffic and it's quite dangerous and they never quite get in the right spot when they're coming in, they're always on the line. And it's, it's really not fair to do that. And it sort of segues though into shop local for us. It's the shopping season now and our merchants, this is when they make their money because you know, for them especially, July and August are pretty, um, pretty slow and they really count on us from now until the end of the year. So, and money, speaking of Lori, how much do we get in sales tax revenue? Um, if Okay. And last year we took over the 1. Uh, 1.65 million. And, yep, yep. So, so you know, just telling the residents, think about that. That's 1.65 million that comes in to the village and lowers um, your taxes. And you know, if you bought everything on Amazon, taxes would go up. That's about a 12% tax mm -hmm. increase on our That's side. 10% right. of our budget. Yeah, 10% yeah. of our budget it is. is uh, it, it, actually, it's, you know, it's quite mm -hmm. amazing. If you, and if you read the, the county executive's budget, of course, they increased their sales tax revenue. And it, but yes, sales tax seems to be staying strong. It was, uh, it's, over the last three years, it's really seen a steady increase. And we did, as Lori said, we just received that first payment. And that was, um, I'd love to see us keep that momentum up. but. 
Um, but we'll see. But on that note, Mayor, it's probably worth noting for the residents that uh, with Small Business Saturday, once again, in, in our newsletter, we noted that John Gordon of Admiral Realty is going to be buying out all those meters on the, uh, on the east side on Palm Field Park and Craft. And uh, we'll also offer the free parking in our uh, lots from noon on on that Saturday. So, you know. And people wonder, just to tell our audience, why we have it noon on and not all day. And it's because when we used to do all day, we found out people parked and went into the city. <laughs> so they, they were not helping the merchants. So sometimes people were like, oh my gosh, village government, you're just cheap. And the answer is no. It keeps people from going in. People were parking and going to lunch and a show in Manhattan. So it was defeating the shop local purpose. So that's why the noon, and it works. It really sure does, does work. So um. Um, and, and, and Mayor, just on, on this subject, I, I use it as an example because it's the only example that immediately springs to mind, but I think of our uh, you know, wonderful bookstore here in the village. You know, in my experience, if you want to order a book, you go down there, you order a book, and you can pick it up usually in just uh, you know, a couple of days. You, know, you save the environmental cost of delivery and Amazon, box. one less Amazon truck in, in the neighborhood. I'm sure there are other businesses in the village which are, which are similar. So, you know, people should also, you know, think that, you know, our, you know, our merchants can often order things and it can actually be more convenient for, for everyone and it also helps the village. Yeah. Yeah, and you'd be surprised how much our DPW, when you talk about the ripple effect, they talk about how many extra boxes from Amazon and Zappos in particular, and it, it affects everything, um, environment, workload, et cetera. So shop local. Uh, any, we have our stalwart audience, the <laughs> Hayden Fitzgerald families who, who come and, and send us good karma. So uh, thank you for being here. Any, uh, co any comments from them? Yes. Hey. Yes. No. All right. OK. It's OK. <laughs> short, short of words, Jim. Short of words. Yeah. And Jim, thank you again for serving on the planning board. So appreciative, it really is, because that's been a busy board. Yeah, yes. it has. Um, all right, I need a motion to close our November 13th meeting. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion passes. And our December date, James? Is the 11th. The 11th. The 11th, and then uh, on the board discussed, uh, we have a tentative work session schedule for the December 10th. Perfect. Anyway, I gotta yeah. tell you. So yeah. we'll see everybody either 10th and or 11th.